Hey, Viking fans, this is Keith Millard, and you are listening to the One Bar and Lupicus Show. Go Vikes! All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepagus Show. I am One Bar with Lepagus, and it is time to hop into the mailbag. We asked for questions. You guys delivered. Before we get into that, remember, subscribe, like the videos. We're almost at 3,000. So Hashtag. Subscribe. Take her from there. Hashtag 3,000. Hashtag 3,000 in the comments for a chance to win a brand new, beautiful Christian Derrissaw Vikings jersey. Purple or white? Whatever they want. Whatever's cheaper. All right, let's uh, let's hop into this mailbag. We got some good ones this time. I'm gonna tear open this sack. SSM inside. Creation starts off the starts off this scuttlebutt with, "What's your guys' optimal week one starting offensive line?" Wow, what a question from SSM Creations, one of our favorites around here. Uh, well, I think it's got to be Christian Darius on left tackle, Wyatt Davis left guard. Uh, Garrett Bradbury center, then your right guard Ezra Cleveland, right tackle Brian O'Neill. Um, I, I don't think you want to monkey around with moving Ezra back to the left side. I just keep him at right guard for now. Um, and hopefully he makes a year two jump. I think that's what everybody's hoping for. I'm going to agree, except I'm going to put Wyatt Davis on the right side. If I'm going to mess with anybody, I'm messing with Ezra Cleveland because Wyatt Davis played right guard the whole time at Ohio state. So I'm putting him just into a real nice comfy spot. Because I do not want him stepping on his dick. I don't want any excuses. Go do your thing. Ezra, we've already messed with him a little bit. Let's just. Ezra's been tormented. Poor guy has been moved around so much. Who, who do you got more? Who, who do you got more? Uh, who has more upside at guard? Wyatt Davis or Ezra Cleveland? I don't know. He's pretty damn close, actually. But, I don't uh, think it's close. Yeah, I, I mean, if Davis has been on the right side, and I guess you keep the power guy there and you put your finesse guy on the left. But uh yeah, I don't know. I just I hate keep to keep shuffling Ezra around. Because then if Rick he sucks, Wolf. if he starts to struggle, then you can say, well, he's only been here one year. We need another year. And then, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We're pretty close, though. So. Uh, yeah. Next up, uh, what, a, what a wonderful name it is, says, is DJ Wanham a starter next year? Yeah. Um, why don't you start on this one? Uh, no, I don't think Wanham's a starter. Um, he's going to be a rotational guy. I mean, honestly, I think, I think Steven Weatherly has the best chance to, to be a starter. Um, and, and also, uh, round three, who do we get? Patrick Jones. Yeah, completely blanking. Jones, I think actually has a chance to maybe even get more reps right up the bat. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a very good battle. We got Hunter back. We got Jones. Um, and uh, and Weatherly is going to be there. And what's his nuts from in the fourth round? Janarius, Janarius Robinson, who's Robinson is just the other day. Mix, so I don't think uh, he'll start. I don't know. I think it's too hard to say. I think he'll be in the mix, and I hope it's an open competition because DJ Wanham showed flashes where he's pretty damn good last year, but he definitely hit that rookie wall, faded out for us. I think there was like six games where he didn't have a sack, maybe even more. Um, Stephen Weatherly. I don't want them just to start him because he's the veteran, you know, that, that this hasn't worked in the past for the Vikings. And, you know, we saw it in the draft the Vikings are trying new things, drafting different types of players, you know, going over their comfort zone, what they've done in recent years. So I'm hoping that carries over to the, the way they handle their lineup this year, uh, have a true competition, best man win. And if that's the case, I think DJ Wanham has a great chance to start. Yeah. I, I mean, I love me some DJ Wanham. Um, there's just going to be, a, I think that we're going to see a lot of different looks, a lot of different mixes, um, and I do think they'll just kind of hand it to Weatherly right off the bat. It's and it might their... not even – this might be a case where it doesn't really matter who's the starter. I mean, if they're truly going to rotate and keep it fresh, uh, that starter could just be a, you know, a ceremonial take because I think you could just keep rotating guys in. Remember in gym class when you're in different sections and then at the gym, t Mr. U would just say, rotate, and you yeah. go to the next one. I do remember that. All right, just making sure. All right, there we go. Ethan Griffin writes in. Let's see. How do we have the best day one and two imaginable and then poop the bed? Wow, Ethan, very good word. On day three like that, I'm still happy with the draft overall, but my God, were there some reaches. Ethan sounds pissed off. Sounds the way we did when we uh, first saw these uh, players come off the board. Um, here's what I think happened, and I think this is the Viking strategy. I think... You know, Rick Spielman already said round seven wasn't great. Um, they had all these picks. They saw these certain traits in these guys. They said, I don't care where they're universally ranked. This is who we want. This is who fits in with our team. And this is who we're taking. Um, and you go back and look. I mean, 
Mel Kuyper had Bynum as one of the top players available on day three. Um, Smith Marset was ranked in the fourth, fifth round, but tons of publications prior to the draft. So um, other than Nguanu, I don't think a lot of people had him going around four, but I think the Vikings were looking for sp specific things and then they went and targeted him. So I think that's what happened. That's why we saw what we saw. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think when he says he pooped the bed, we had the same thoughts. I mean, we were so laser focused on specific guys for specific rounds. We knew well, after round two, after round three, it was going to get kind of pretty jumbled. All the teams did it. There were some very gross picks out there. And when you look at the actual experts as far as how they ranked this Vikings draft, there are some damn good grades for the Vikings. I mean, almost all are A's, high B's. So I, I rely on them. They, they, they ended up with a very good draft. Sure, we didn't get our Jalen Darden. We didn't get our Cade Johnson. But uh, we, we got some very good players. Well, and I think, I mean, we got to take some blame for this. It's just us not doing our due diligence really prior. I mean, you get so focused on these guys who are in these draft simulators. You keep working these over and over again. And you, you kind of forget to expand your horizons and reach out and see who else is out there. And um, I can guarantee you we're going to have some segments next year on uh, making sure we know everybody in this draft. Oh, my Deep God. I don't know if sleepers. that's possible. Deep sleeper vids. All right, L.S. Gregor writes in, I'm happy that Kellen Mond was drafted in round three. Do you think it was a mandate by ownership, or do you think Rick Spielman is sending a message, message that he plans to be around for the next five years or so? Why don't you go ahead and start? One bar. Um, I, I mean, you got to just look at it overall. Uh, Kirk Cousins has two years left on his contract. It was time. We've been talking about this for the last handful of years, um, even before Kirk Cousins getting that young quarterback in, bringing somebody in. Uh, Kellen Mond was there. Great value. I mean, a lot of people saw him as round three. I don't think they forced this whatsoever. So it just, he fell in their lap. And I do think Spielman's going to be around for a while. And I think he is looking towards the future post Kirk Cousins, post Mike Zimmer. So love the pick, Ellis Gregor. I agree with you. And I think this is for, for the future. Yeah, I don't think this is a mandate at all. I think it was just something the Vikings needed to do. And, and it's long overdue, really. Um, you go round one quarterback, you go round seven undrafted quarterback. There needs to be some kind of middle ground here. You got your established shutter. Kirk Cousins has been damn good the last couple of years. You get your young guy to groom behind him. He can be the backup this year. You didn't have a backup going into the draft, so it was a need. Uh, I think this was the plan all along to hopefully land one of these guys. I don't, you know, the, the rumor was they were going to take Justin Fields if he fell at 14, but Fields would have been in the same situation with maybe a little more pressure on Kirk Cousins moving forward. But um, Monday thinks perfect because there's, I mean, yeah, there's going to be crazy fans who are going to be clamoring for him to start right away, especially if Cousins has a bad game. But that's not the reason they took him. They, re they took him because he's a more talented player already than Sean Manning, and he gives you the upside to develop into a future long-term solution at the position. So uh, I think just a smart football move by the Vikings and really nothing from ownership had any influence on this. He joins the Vikings and has already has the exact same amount of touchdown passes as Sean Manning does as a pro. So Hell yes. Well done, Kellen. What a guy. All right, SSM double dip. Does Zach Davidson have a chance to beat old Colquitt for the punter? <laughs> Man, uh, you think I don't even I don't think they're gonna try a punter. I think he's just gonna be a he's definitely got a chance to be tight end three. Um they got that new guy they signed too, the undrafted guy who was 30, the old Zach pitcher. von Rosenberg. Yeah, I think he's got a better shot to un to unseat. I don't think Colquitt's job is safe one bit. I think, I think he, SSM, I, would... I think this was kind of a joke. Oh, oh, so no, I don't think so. Just but it does give uh, Davidson some added, you know, uh, more makes it more valuable because, God forbid, your punter gets hurt in a game, you got an emergency solution on the sidelines, assuming he's active on game day. Well, and he can boot that ball. Uh, in, in, he had 48 kicks, averaging over 40 yards a punt, and down 19 of those bad boys inside the 20. And he had a long of 67. Zach Davidson, that big 6-7 leg. Boom! Those are the Kari Vedvik numbers. Gary Vedvik, why'd you have to say that? Hey, he couldn't play tight end, though. Zach Davidson. I, I can't wait to watch him at tight end. I love those big-ass tight ends. Richard Angulo style. Ha! You're the only person who remembers Richard Angulo. I bet somebody watching remembers Richard Angulo. Just saying. Is that the right. one where you... Uh, yep, it you is. All right, Johnny Banana had the last one. Johnny Banana. Who was the biggest reach for the Vikings in the entire draft? Uh... I, I, I'm assuming we're going to both be the same on this one. I don't think uh, we will. I think it's the running back, Kenny Nguanu. Um, I think he was like the 237th ranked player on a certain site, and we took him uh, with our first fourth-round pick. He wasn't even the leading rusher on his team. 
Um, so to me, taking that kind of player who I think is going to have a very specific role, um, maybe see a couple touches a game, but be a, a return man, uh, that really was to me the biggest reach. I, I'm actually really warming up to that one. I think we're going to have fun with that guy. He might only get a couple touches, um, but I think they're going to be good touches. I'm not saying I'm not warming up to him or anything. I think value wise, he was probably the biggest reach. Yeah. Uh, surprising. I just, I looked at, was it CBS? They ranked every single pick in the draft and they gave him an A. I was very surprised. Yeah. And then there was an article about him being the draft sleeper you want your team to take. Um, so they're definitely, he had some fans. He did have some buzz prior to the selection. Uh, I'm actually going with fourth rounder, Janaris Robinson. Um, I mean, they basically took this guy because he has great size and has potential. Wingspan. Wings. I mean, he's never put it together. He had no production at Florida State. I think you can get guys like that all throughout the draft. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not excited to see what he can bring to the table, but just taking him based off his size, uh, I don't know. I just think that we would have took somebody else at that point. In round, if we would have took him in round five, it would have been fine. Or round six, great. You can find those guys all throughout the draft. That one just screamed Andre Patterson to me. Uh, saw this guy, saw his raw tools, and he's someone he wants to work with. Make sure we get him. Take him now. Uh, I think this was a Patterson pick. Well, and, and also a little side note here. S never mind the Vikings. The biggest reach of the draft. How about Ian Book going to the Saints in round four? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you take him there, that shows you have plans for him potentially being a, a starter down the road. Uh, I mean, I think Ian Book can be a journeyman type of quarterback, a great bench option, kind of a Ryan Fitzpatrick career where he's, you know, the back of everybody just keeps signing. Uh, but really, when it comes down to football skills, not a strong arm, not an accurate arm. He can scramble. He can make plays. Scramble, he's got stuff. legs. Your offense is going to kind of just be this um, – this just this poppery, this, this mismatch of uh, semi chaos, but it's it could work. Yeah, I just it's gonna be a shit show. But yeah, Ian Buck it was gross. It was I gross. He was being undrafted for sure. That I is, like him. Uh, I do like Ian Buck. Don't get me wrong. There's enough about Ian Buck. <laughs> yeah, it's just shocking. It was shocking. All right, our mailbag is empty. Remember, hashtag three thousand in the comments to win that Derisad jersey. Let's get the three thousand subscribers. Lepagus and I, we might have to shotgun like three. Three beers in a row? I don't know. I got to do something goofy. Uh, can I get Skinny to come in and do a stand-in for me? Yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. Wow. I have sensitive teeth, and I don't swallow. All right. That's our mailbag. It is emptied onto the floor. Feels good. I feel so much lighter. Do you? Yeah, I feel really good. Those were some good questions. All right. Well, here's a, here's isn't a question. This is an answer for you guys. In Malaysia, blowjobs are illegal and punishable by 20 years in prison, plus a mandatory caning. <laughs> 